What's up guys, my name is Cornelius Robinson and this is Overshoot. Today I'm walking you through your first 10 minutes in flux, so let's get into it. When you first sign up for Flux, this is the page you'll see, except for this list in the center. This is a list of projects and parts that you create. Towards the top, we can easily search and filter by part or project. We can also look at the parts or projects we've starred in the past. On the left you can see a summary of your profile where you can add a bio, website, or other information. Over on the upper right hand corner you'll see your profile avatar. You can always return to this page by selecting profile. This menu is full of useful links. I won't go into all of them but I'll highlight just a few important ones. Documentation is where you'll find information on how to do everything in Flux. Community takes you to the official Flux Slack channel, where you can ask questions, post your latest project, and chat with hundreds of other engineers and developers. As you know, Flux is currently in beta, so you'll run into bugs, and you can report them here. When you're ready to start designing, just click on the Flux logo at the top left. Here you can import a part or start a new project. Keep in mind that parts also count as projects, but we'll get into that later. For now, I'm going to start a new blank project. At the top is the name of the project, which you can change to anything you want. You or others can star or fork this project. In the middle here, we have tabs for different design environments. I'll come back to this a little later. Next, we have the share button. This gives you full control over who can see or edit this project. On the right, you'll find general information on the project or part you have selected, followed by properties and assets. These are especially useful when creating a new part. The simulation panel will allow you to set the timing when simulating a circuit. Over on the left is the library panel, where you can find thousands of parts contributed by the Flux community. Obviously there's a search bar along with a number of filters to make parts easy to find. When you're ready to start designing, simply drag components from the library onto the canvas here. I have an LED that I've made in the past, so I'll just filter by my own parts. On the right, we can see the properties of that LED. That means the resistor needs to be 150 ohms. Generic parts such as this resistor can be changed. This might sound obvious, but make sure you always include a ground in your design. This will be important later. Drawing wires is super simple. Just click on the little dot on the part and connect it to another part. Last, I'll add a simple header by searching for it. These power symbols act like portals, so however many I use, they will always be connected. I'm just going to copy and paste them. Now I need to add a part number to this generic resistor and change the package. Once I've done that, we can scroll down to see availability and pricing on this part. Now we can select the PCB tab and start on the board. Over here on the left, you can see the layout, which contains the components and nets. 
If I select the layout, I can add an object specific rule. There are many to choose from, but I'm looking for size. This will change the overall board size. It accepts one or two dimensions. For example, if I enter two inches by four inches, the board will change accordingly in the X and Y axis. However, for this project, I'm simply going to keep it at seven millimeters square. Moving the parts is just as simple as clicking and dragging. If I right click on this LED, I can rotate it or just use the keyboard shortcut. I need to put this resistor on the bottom layer, so I just right click again and select flip layer. We can see the bottom of the board by clicking this button at the top right. To start routing traces, just select the little dot near the center of the pad. To change the direction of this trace, just select F on the keyboard. Because the resistor is on the bottom layer, I need to right click and select the layer. It will automatically add a via for us. For the last trace, I'll flip the board to look at the other side. If you've gotten to this point and want to change the trace width, we can easily do that by creating a rule set. Just select the rules tab on the left panel and add rule set. I'll start by renaming it to traces and add a description. For the selection criteria, we just need trace. Notice we've selected seven objects. Now we can simply add a layout rule similar to how we did it before. Just add trace width and I'll use 15 mils. Okay, that looks good. The last thing I'll mention about the layout is ground fills. If we select the layer panel, we can enable the visibility. Flux adds ground fills by default to fill the remaining space on the board. The same is true for the bottom layer. Now that the layout is done, I want to show you the 3D viewer. Just click on 2D at the bottom right and rotate it to see our work. Awesome. If we want to have this board made, we can simply select the Flux logo at the top left and go down to Export and select Gerber. That'll contain everything the board manufacturers need. The last thing I want to cover is how to share this design. At the top right, select Share. At the moment, it's set to Private, but we can easily change that to Anyone Can View, for example. In the advanced menu, we have much more control. For example, I can invite Nico to edit this board. Now anyone can see this project, but only Nico and myself can edit it. And that's your first 10 minutes in Flux. So sign up and start building. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content like this every week.